useful applications. Who doesn't love discovering more of them? You guys seem to really enjoy my videos on handy Windows apps. So I was working on another one, but then I thought, why stick to just Windows? So in this video, I'm showing you 10 super useful applications that work across all platforms, Windows, macOS, and Linux. Let's dive in. Number one is App Flowy. The all known notion is great, but it's not as good as App Flowy. You want privacy or actual control over your data? Yeah, Notion is not giving you that. So after installing and signing in, which is not forced, you'll see this page, which is kind of tutorial and the pre-made templates. You can play around with these texts here to get used to App Flowy and change the cover color by clicking here. Then set it from these sources or remove it. It starts with an icon. You can replace it with an emoji or upload your own. It basically works with blocks. To start, just insert a slash and now you have access to all AppFlowy tools and text edits. So now let's create a new page. Let's say I'm writing about Windows 11 and when I get bored of typing, I click on a slash and continue my edits using AI. When finished, you can adjust it again or keep or discard it. Basically, you have access to everything you need for note taking here. AI, text formats, tables, list, and also page links. So you can refer any pages you want in other documents, grids, codes, text, formulas, and so much more. There's a lot to cover about AppFlowy. If you'd like a full tutorial on it, just tell me to make one. Another great feature of AppFlowy is templates. Just go to the AppFlowy store and based on what you need, select a template and start using it. So let's say I'm a student. I click on education and the pre-made templates appear. You just click on one and start using it. The free plan of AppFlowy works great and includes one collaborative workspace, which lets you to use up to two members on it, unlimited pages and blocks, five gigabytes of storage, intelligent search, 10 AI responses, two AI images, and using mobile app, which is awesome. There's a real-time collaboration, so you have access to all essential features, but if you want more, you can either upgrade to the pro plan or self-host it yourself. And it's open source with a huge community, so it's growing fast. If you care about privacy, flexibility, and long-term control, AppFlee should replace Notion on your machine yesterday. Number two is Rust Desk. Look, remote desktop apps are either expensive, invasive, or both. TeamViewer is a bit bloated and AnyDesk is getting sketchy. So if you're tired of trusting your screen and your files to a mastery server in the cloud, it's time to take control with Rust Desk. Connecting to a PC is super easy. Whenever you open the app on the device you want to connect to, it gives you an ID. All you need to do is to enter that ID on your PC and accept the connection. On the client app, you can set which permissions the connected device will have. Keyboard and mouse control, clipboard access, audio, copy and paste, remote start, and even session recording. Once connected, as you can see, I can fully control my Linux laptop from my PC. Now that you're connected, go to display settings and set the screen to adaptive for full screen mode. You can also adjust quality and codec based on your network and CPU power. One feature I really like is the built-in chat and voice call. It's genuinely helpful when something's wrong and you need to clear communication, especially with headphones connected to your PC. At the top of the screen, you've got a toolbar that you can pin. In the actions section, you can set a password and do all sorts of things like transfer files, view the camera, use TCP tunnels, switch control sides, or take screenshot. It's super useful. After each session, you can mark the device as a favorite or create an account to auto-save your connected devices to the cloud. That way, you can access them from any devices anywhere. And as I mentioned, you can even record the session. Great for when you're doing a tutorial to your clients. This is the open source remote desktop tool that actually puts you in charge. Think of it as a private, self-hosted TeamViewer replacement you didn't know you needed. There's nothing much in the settings, but if you want a full video on how Rust Desk works, tell me in the comments. Number three is Anki. If you've ever tried to cram for an exam or memorize literally anything, 
Chances are someone shouted you, you need Anki. And they were a hundred percent right. Anki isn't just a flashcard app. It's a memory weapon and it's so good at what it does. You can learn a new language, study for medical or law exams, memorize names and faces, brush up on geography, master long poems, and even practice guitar chords. It uses spaced repetition, basically a brain hacking technique that shows you stuff right before you're about to forget it. That means you spend less time reviewing what you already know and more time fixing what you don't. So when you open it for the first time, it might look a little complicated. But don't worry. To get started, you need to create a deck, which means a category of flashcards. And now click on add. Now just write the content for the front and back of the flashcard. You can do pretty much everything here. For example, I write car on the front and then add a screenshot of a car to make it easier to understand. You can perform almost any text operations, record voice and even add equations. Let's say I'm learning Turkish. On the front, I'll show car in English with an image and on the back, I write Turkish translation. Once your car is ready, go to tools, select study deck, choose the one you created and you're good to go. English, other languages and specific subjects, there's a ton available. This tool is also super helpful for teachers who want to create courses on any subject. They can track learners' progress easily. It's open source, available on all platforms, and supports for account sync. So your flashcards stay updated across PC and mobile. No matter where you are, you can keep learning. It's packed with features I can't cover all in the video. So if you want a full walkthrough, just let me know in the comments. Number 4 is PDF Gear. This one's pretty much a lot asked. And to be honest, most PDF editors are either ripped from 2009, stopped with ads, or pretend to be free until you hit that export button and surprise, it's paywall time. PDF gear flips that narrative completely. And here's why this should be your default PDF app. When you first open PDF gear, it gives you a quick overview of all the tools it offers, like converting from and to PDF, merge and split tools, and the full rundown of everything included in the free version. Let's see it in action. I'll open a file and show you how it works. Once the file is open, you'll see options to print, change the zoom level, and adjust the page view, single, double, or continuous. You can also enable auto scroll or switch to slideshow mode for presentations. There's a screenshot tool and an OCR feature that works really well. In the comment section, you can highlight, underline, strike through, add shapes, or insert text boxes. And in the edit section, you can edit text and objects, add or remove images and links, insert or remove watermarks, and add headers and footers. The pages section gives you an overview of all the pages in your document. Great for quick navigation. One standout feature, which I haven't seen for free anywhere else, is chat with PDF. For example, I uploaded a PDF about my YouTube channel and selected the prompt summarize this PDF. It instantly generated a summary preview of the file. Super fast and seriously useful. Perfect for projects, studying or work. On the left panel, you've got access to bookmarks, page thumbnails and comments. Once you're done editing, just hit Ctrl plus S to save and boom, you're done. PDF gear works on Windows, Mac, iOS and Android with no account needed. Unlike most so-called free tools, PDF gear doesn't restrict features or shove annoying ads in your face. If you handle even one PDF a month, this one's a no-brainer. Number 5 is Zen. It's a privacy-focused open source browser built with a clean modern UI and a focus on productivity. Think of it as your browser but calm. Here's what makes it stand out. Zen browser is sleek, full-featured browser built on Firefox. So if you're already using Firefox, you can switch over it easily. It supports all Firefox extensions, making the transition seamless. A lot of people have asked me which browser I use in my screen recordings, and the answer is Zen, with a feature called Compact Mode Turned On. This mode hides everything except the actual website content, giving you a super clean, distraction-free browsing experience. 
perfect for recording or just focusing on what matters. Zen is currently in beta, so there might be some occasional bugs. Though personally I haven't run into any issues. You can install it alongside your main browser and test it without affecting your current setup. Workspaces. You can organize tabs by project and instantly switch context like a pro. Compact mode, which I really like. It hides the tab bar when you don't need it, giving you more screen space. The next feature is Glance, so you can switch between must use tabs without digging through your chaotic tab graveyard. Split view, so it basically makes two view tabs by side by side, perfect for research, comparisons, or copywriting. Zen browser is included next to the PDF gear because it offers fantastic PDF reading and editing tools. Once you open a PDF in Zen browser, it gives you basic navigation like using buttons, or entering page numbers and also zooming are available. But the real magic is in the side panel. The first button lets you add your signature by typing, drawing or uploading an image. Next up is a highlighter which you don't often see in other browsers. The following two options allow you to insert text or draw directly on the PDF. And the last button on this side lets you add images to PDF. Next to that, you'll find print and save options. And get this, clicking on this button reveals even more amazing features for a browser. Presentation mode, rotation options, and various page scrolling modes like vertical, horizontal, and wrapped. Or viewing pages with no spreads, odd spreads, and even even spreads. If your browser feels like it's working against you half the time, Zen might just restore your sanity and your focus. Number six is Copia. All right, let's talk backups. Because if you've ever lost a folder with 10 years of work or memes, you know that sinking feeling. The thing is, most backup tools are either bloated, locked behind subscriptions, or just too complicated to trust. Enter Copia, a fast, secure, and open source backup solution that does everything right. Here's why it should be on every PC. First, it has end-to-end -end encryption by default. So your backups are safe, even from the cloud provider. Second is the application and compression. It saves space and cuts down upload times. Whenever only a file or two files in a folder are edited, it only uploads the changes to the backup. Third, it works with your cloud of choice. So you can use Google Cloud, Amazon S3, you name it. It has both a beautiful desktop app and a command line interface. So it works whether you're a casual user or a DevOps wizard. You can create snapshots, set backup policies, and restore files quickly without hassle. It's available on Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. So totally cross-platform. I'm actually not going to make this video longer for repeated things. I made a full video on how to use Copia. So if you want to learn more, I've left the link in the description. Number seven is Nora. Let's be honest, default Windows music player doesn't feel fine, at least for me. So if you want your music experience to actually look and feel as good as your playlist sounds, Nora is the upgrade your ears deserve. This is a gorgeous modern music player built with care, and it's free and open source and also cross-platform. It supports all the formats you care about, MP3, FLAC, WAV, AIC, OGG, M4R, the whole crew. It has automatic metadata fetching and tag editing, so it makes your messy library clean again. The online sync lyric support, which I really love and its unique feature in offline music players. It has both light and dark themes, so smooth on eyes, day or night. And finally, library suggestions to help you automate the boring stuff like fixing tags. It's like the devs that sat down and asked, what if a music player didn't suck? And then they actually built it. Number eight is Activity Watch. Have you ever finished a long day at your PC and wonder, what did I even do today? Yeah, same. That's where Activity Watch comes in. It's like having a personal productivity detective quietly lagging where your time actually goes. This is a free open source privacy first time tracker that runs in the background and gives you insanely useful insights without selling your data. After installing it, you should use it for about a week so it can analyze your workflow properly. Once it has some data, open the system tray, click the dashboard, and go to the activity tab. 
you'll see a full breakdown of your day-to-day -day activity here. You can filter out inactive time by enabling the exclude AFK time option. So when you're away from your PC, it will not count it. Now you have to connect watchers. Watchers are like plugins you can install for the apps you use most. For example, if you're a developer, you can install watchers for your Veeam, Visual Studio Code, or other code editors. If you're into media, there are watchers for Spotify, Chromecast, VR, or other media apps. And for pretty much everyone, installing the browser watcher is a must do. To explore available watchers, just enter the provided URL in your browser. I'm installing the browser watcher by clicking here from the store. Once installed, it connects automatically and shows you if it's connected or not. After that, you'll get a more detailed breakdown of what you're doing. The dashboard shows a nice flowchart of your activities, including browser tabs, windows opened, editors used, and more. When you click on summary, you'll see a list of applications you have used. For example, I've been using the Split Fiction, which is really fun, the Brave browser, which I love, and Chrome for some recording tasks, and Telegram for messaging. My top apps are Split Fiction and ChatGPT for answering my questions. The app auto-categorizes what you do to make the data meaningful, but sometimes it needs help. For example, it says I worked for only 12 minutes today. Definitely not accurate so I should adjust the categories manually. In the category section, you can see which activities are uncategorized, which are media related, social or work related. You can manually define what counts as work and what counts as entertainment in the settings tab. It even has a stopwatch feature for tracking time spent on a specific task or project. The app is completely free. One thing that I use often is dark mode, which you can toggle on in settings. That's about it. It works across Windows, Linux, and macOS. And most importantly, all your data stays local. No cloud sync unless you want it. And no creepy analytics. ActivityWatch is like rescue time, but ethical and totally under your control. Number nine is a SQL disk. If your PC ever screamed low disk space and you had no idea where it all went, this app is for you. A SQL disk is the tool you wish you had earlier. So when launching it, you first see an overview of your drives. Click on any drive you want to scan and you'll get a beautiful circular storage overview. By clicking on any folder, it shows you its contents. Let's say a particular folder is taking up a lot of space on your drive. Just drag it here and delete it. To preview any files before deleting them, just click on them. Each circle in the first row represents a main folder in a drive. In the following rows, you see items and folders inside those folders, making it easy to visualize, something Linux users are familiar with. It's free, open source, and it makes cleaning up your drives so much easy. And it's under 10 megabytes. No fluff, no nonsense. If you want a cleaner system without digging through the file explorer, Squirrel Disk is your cleanup crew in a click. And finally, number 10 is Converter Now. Conversion may sound easy at the first glance, but if you do a bit more juggling with numbers, it can really mess with your mind. That's why you need an application that does it for you easily. Converter Now does it all. It's super fast and clean. Using Converter Now, you can convert length, area, volume, currencies, time, temperature, speed, force, fuel, consumption, and a lot more. It's fast, minimal, and as you can see, just works with the second you start typing. This is a cross-platform open source unit converter that's built for real people, not ad revenue. So why it deserves a permanent spot on your PC? It's fully customizable, so you can reorder and prioritize units you actually use. It includes a built-in calculator, so you can do math mid-conversion, yes. It updates currency exchange rates daily, so it's ideal for travelers or remote workers. And lastly, it runs on Windows, Linux, Android, and the web. So you've always got it on hand. And yeah, it's 100% free, no ads, and it respects your privacy. Thanks for watching. If you have enjoyed this video, hit that like button and subscribe for more content and useful apps. And if you got something in mind related to software or tech, drop it in the comments. I'd be happy to make a video on it.